What's up everybody and welcome back to another installment of Tom Talks and today as 2016 is now behind us many of you will be looking back at the year gone by and looking at the best of 2016 quite frankly so I thought I would do the same but look more specifically at my top five games of 2016. Um, 2016 has been a great year for games, we've saw a lot of great releases, so I thought I'd run through my top five. So without further ado, my number five goes to Firewatch from Campo Santo. Firewatch is a game that broke my heart in its first five minutes. Those first five minutes play completely differently to the rest of the game, but it set a tone for what would be a very profound experience. Not only is Firewatch beautiful from an aesthetic standpoint, boasting an art style akin to like a watercolour painting, but it's also incredibly touching and beautiful from a writing standpoint. The relationship between Henry and Delilah that you experience over a walkie-talkie is just incredibly sincere. It feels so real thanks to the writing and the performances. And when you combine that with a very thriller-esque and mysterious narrative and you watch their relationship bloom and blossom over the course of the game, um, Firewatch is completely compelling. The conclusion to Firewatch is very divisive, but it's stuck with me nonetheless. Firewatch is no doubt one of the great indie gems of 2016, but it's also one of the year's best games, in my opinion. And moving on to number four now, we have Ratchet & Clank from Insomniac Games. Now, my gaming habits consisted of a lot of platformers back in the day, and Ratchet & Clank featured prominently in that mix. Granted, I wasn't as excited about this reboot, but this reboot certainly piqued my curiosity. It was only until I sat down and played the game that my love completely boomed for Ratchet & Clank. Thanks to a colourful cast of characters, witty writing, and the sheer satisfaction of collecting a load of nuts and bolts, uh, Ratchet & Clank was not only a huge nostalgic trip, but it was just one of the best experiences of 2016 and brought a huge smile to my face. Uh, Ratchet & Clank is an incredible a uh, third-person shooter and platformer. It looks absolutely gorgeous on the PlayStation 4. And if any of you loved Ratchet & Clank back in the day or playing the old platformers, then 2016's Ratchet & Clank will certainly uh, rekindle um, that lost love for that particular genre. And moving on to number three now, that goes to Batman, the Telltale series. Now, this wouldn't be a Tom Lynch list without a nod to a certain Cape Crusader, but all fan bias aside, Telltale's latest series is great. It takes the Batman mythos in some truly unseen directions that we haven't seen in any other mediums, quite frankly. It takes the characters and the stories we know, we know and love and completely flips them on their heads. And when you combine that with Telltale's typical choice-based gameplay, you can really shape Bruce Wayne and Batman to your playstyle and to you. It's not just about striking fear into the hearts of enemies as Batman, but it's also about juggling the socio-political life of Bruce Wayne and considering the welfare of Gotham. Despite Telltale's engine running like absolute garbage at times, Batman the Telltale series is quite frankly one of the best Batman games I've ever played. And moving on to number two now, that goes to Doom uh, from id Software. After a very troubled development and preliminary skepticism uh, surrounding the game when press copies were going out uh, to reviewers a day before release, the writing was seemingly on the wall for Doom, but it was only until it launched that it took everybody by surprise and launched to critical acclaim because, quite frankly, it's bloody brilliant. Thanks to the 60 frames per second and 1080p, the frenetic combat of Doom almost has a kind of rhythmic style to it. You're bouncing between different enemies, blasting them away with your shotgun or performing quick and snappy melee kills to pick up health and XP. It just makes the gameplay feel incredibly fast and quick, but also feels very right. Uh, at the same time. Thanks to the self-aware tone and nature of the game, very sleek level design and gameplay, and a head-banging score, uh, it all marries together to create a, uh, an FPS that's just damn fun to play. Doom is not only one of the best uh, FPSs I've played this year, but it's probably one of the best first-person shooters I've played ever, period. You kill demons and you have a blast while doing it. And moving on to my number one now, that goes to Uncharted 4. A Thief's End. Uncharted 4 is a beautiful conclusion to Nathan Drake's story and the beloved uh, Naughty Dog PlayStation franchise. No doubt Uncharted will continue years down the line, but Uncharted 4 is a culmination of everything we love about that franchise in the previous three games, but alongside additional uh, gameplay tweaks like an open-endedness to the level design and combat that give the players a bit more agency, and the rope, which quite frankly makes Nathan Drake more Indiana Jones than he's ever been. Uncharted 4 
score is gorgeous, it is filled with great performances, it is incredibly well written, and it boasts a really fun uh, multiplayer and survival mode that makes Uncharted 4 unabashedly deserved of my number one spot, and indeed my favourite game of 2016. And that will just about do it for this instalment of Tom Talks. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video, and indeed checking out my videos in 2016. It's been an absolute blast um, to make videos again, and I hope you enjoy watching the videos uh, as much as I enjoy making them. If you enjoyed this one in particular though, please like, share and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter, I'm at LevelUpLynch, and I hope to see you guys in 2017, but until then, take it easy.